Ladies and gentlemen, in actual size, Will Marshall. Thank you, everyone. So over the last few days, I've had the pleasure of meeting many of you, and it has is, is really been inspiring. Um, uh, everyone here is working on some of the toughest challenges around the entire planet. And one of the things I've recognized about that is that there's a couple of commonalities. Uh, everyone seems to be working in situations that are some of the most infrastructure-starved and, and data-starved um, situations around the world. And I'm here to tell you about a tool uh, which, like many of your works, it knows no borders and which, although is no silver bullet, may, we think, empower many of your efforts as social innovators around this planet uh, to get your work done. So, this is the Earth, and the Earth doesn't really need much of an introduction. Um, it doesn't need much of an introduction in part because the Apollo uh, 17 astronauts, uh, when they were hurtling around the moon in 1972, took this iconic image. And it inspired an entire generation of human beings to realize that we are on spaceship Earth, fragile and finite as it is, and that we need to take care of it. But beautiful as this image is, it's static, and the world is constantly changing. In particular, it's changing on human day timescales of days and weeks with human action. And if we want to take care of it, we need imagery of the planet on a really regular basis. And today, the imagery of our planet is old. In fact, if you go online and see the satellite imagery there, it's typically many years old. So we posit that if we could take images of the whole planet every day, we'd be able to take care of our spaceship Earth. And so what's standing in our way? Why, why, do, why don't we have images of the whole planet every day today? Well, this is what's standing in our way. Satellites are big, they're expensive, and they're slow. So me and a team of friends got together to try and tackle this problem, to make small and compact satellites that we could launch at scale. And I'm going to show you what our satellite looks like. This is our satellite. This, I might hesitate to add, is not a scale model. It's the real size. It's 10 by 10 by 30 centimeters. It weighs 4 kilograms. And we've stuffed the latest and greatest electronics and sensor systems into this little package, such that even, even though it's 1,000th of the mass of the satellite you see behind me, it is. Uh, it can take, in many ways, it's, it's more powerful. It can take images on the ground 10 times the resolution of the one in there, there. And we call this satellite Dove. We call it Dove because many satellites are named after birds, but typically birds of prey. Sort of like eagle, hawk, swoop, kill this, <laughs> kestrel eye to spy this, or what have you. But our satellites have a humanitarian mission, and so we call them Doves. But we haven't just built them we've launched them into space, and not just one, but many. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. We started, actually, in our garage. Um, now, this is where we built our first prototype just two years ago. And as a Silicon Valley company, it's pretty par for the course to build your first prototype in the garage. But I can tell you, as a space company, this is definitely not usual. Um, <laughs> and. That's not the only lesson we learned uh, from Silicon Valley. We do release early, release off, and we take the latest technology and stuff it into this little satellite. And uh, we, we test them in space on a rapid basis. We've learned how to manufacture them at scale using modern manufacturing techniques. We call it agile aerospace. And what bonds our team is how do we democratize access to satellites and satellite data? In fact, the founders of our company uh, Chris, Robbie, and I, we met at a UN conference uh, 15 years ago that was dedicated to specifically that question. How can satellites be used to help people? How can they be used to help people in developing countries or, 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 or with climate change? And we spent the last 15 years thinking about that. We actually first 
uh, took our efforts uh, doing science teaching in sub-Saharan Africa because we, we thought that that would uh, help relieve people out of poverty. But we actually found that that was more tricky than we thought and, and that building satellites would be easier. Um, so, we actually um, spent many years at NASA building many sorts of satellites, and then we left a couple of years ago to build satellites for humanitarian purposes and commercial purposes. And that's when we formed, formed Planet Labs. So, I'm going to show you this video of two of our satellites being launched from the International Space Station just uh, eight weeks ago. There you see two of them, and you can see the size of our satellites compared with the space station. It's like some of the smallest satellites ever being launched from the most gigantic satellite ever. At the very end, the, sa the, it, the panels clip in the sun. Look, oh, that's, that's cool. Um, <laughs> well, you see, us space geeks don't normally see our satellites um, in space. The last time we see them is when we bolt them to the side of the launch vehicle. So it's really cool to actually get them, to see them in space. And this was taken by an astronaut inside the space station as a video. Um, so that was the first two of 28 that we launched like that. Um, it's the largest constellation of Earth imaging satellites ever launched. Uh, this is what they look like just uh, before we sent them up in their nest, as we call it, the doves in their nest. Um, all these 28 are now in orbit and, and, and operating. And, but that's just the beginning for us. Uh, we just sent another 28 to the launch site. Over the course of this next year, we'll be launching more than 100 satellites. Uh, it's the largest constellation of satellites in human history, all built in our little lab in downtown San Francisco. And this is what they're going to be doing. I'm going to show you a video. They basically act in a single orbit plane. All of the satellites are pointed down, taking images. And the Earth slowly rotates underneath. As it rotates underneath, they slowly scan across. Um, since the Earth takes 24 hours to rotate, they take a picture of every spot on the ground every 24 hours. We call it a line scanner for the planet. We are taking a picture of every single spot on the ground every day. I want to emphasize that. It's uh, quite a radical new data set that, has, uh, that humanity has never before had. And although these satellites were launched just a few weeks ago, we've already started taking some images with them. And I'm just going to share some of the very first images with you today. This is the very first image we got down. The satellite happened to be over the UC Davis campus in California when we took this image. <laughs> no, it's just luck. Um, uh, the image was really beautiful, but when we showed it side by side with the most recent other image, we saw several buildings have been built. The general point is that we'll be able to see urban change as it happens around the world every single day in every town and village. This was taken just uh, yesterday in Bolivia. Um, and I, I, I was just perusing some of the images we took down, and we detected this fire. And that's pretty cool. Uh, we'll be able to detect fires, floods, earthquakes, tsunamis, and help people with their relief operations around the world. This image is of a reservoir. We'll be able to tell the water levels in every water body around the planet every day. Uh, imagine what that can do for water security. From water security to food security, we can also tell crop yield in, in every field. We can tell basically the crop growth and, um, by ratioing certain spectral bands. And that's really cool because we can help farmers to improve their agricultural yield around the planet. If I take a step back for a moment, really we've, we realize that there are hundreds of applications. I barely touched on the surface with these examples. Uh, one of the first ones we thought about was deforestation. We'd be able to track every tree on the planet every day and monitor illegal logging. Um, we can, the difference between today's image and yesterday's image is much of the world's news. We'd be able to find a plane or um, detect uh, floods. No, that's, a, that's exactly right, yeah. Um, that should not be a problem again. Um, and, 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 and so there are hundreds of applications, and we believe the best thing we can do to ensure that all of them are uh, enabled is to democratize access to this data. And so we're going to ensure that that happens. And, and amongst these applications, uh, there are both commercial and humanitarian ones. And we're really lucky with that, because the, the commercial ones are pretty big, too. And, and so in, in essence, the commercial case can fund the satellite system so that the humanitarian uh, cases don't have to support that. Uh, thank you.
So why am I here? Well, I'm here to tell you that this data set is coming. And uh, as a prelude, if you like, it's early days for us, but we hope that this data set will help uh, social innovators around the world. And we want you to start thinking about how it might be useful for you, how it might help you to achieve your mission. I'm here, secondly, to announce that we're launching Planet.org, a humanitarian part of our enterprise, to ensure that the humanitarian potential of our data is, is used. And I'm here to tell you about the first program of that, which we call the Mission One Alliance. Um, essentially, just getting the images from space is, is not enough. Um, it, there's a gap between having pretty pictures and useful information for social innovators around the world. And so whilst there's some NGOs out there that um, maybe have GIS experts who can use this data, there's many that do not. And we want to help them to bridge that gap. So what the Mission One Alliance is about is about bringing together partners, so bring, helping NGOs that don't have that GIS expertise to have that GIS, GIS expertise, along with funding agencies and us investing with our data to help tackle problems. I would like to encourage anyone that thinks that this data will be interesting to them, whether through this program or any others that we will think about doing over the course of this year, to register your interest on planet.org to tell us about your problems and how we can help. And I want to leave you by bringing us back to uh, our beautiful spaceship Earth. We're going to be taking an image of every spot on this Earth every single day, and we're going to be democratizing access to that data, and we're going to we hope that social innovators will make use of that data to help their causes. And so I'll just leave you with the following question. Uh, if you had access to imagery of the whole Earth every single day, what would you do, do, you do with it? What, how would it help your mission, or what new challenges would you solve? Thank you.